Hey, major warning. Have you put one of these on a battery as a long-term way of maintaining your battery? Maybe a tractor, maybe a motorcycle, an airplane, something where you're thinking that if it's not driven a lot, this will keep the battery up to date. Well, I did this with my airplane and the battery was ruined. So I thought, well, that's a fluke. Can't be this. This is only putting out about half an amp. Bought another battery and the battery was ruined. So that is my warning to you. Uh, I notice in the manual that these say, please couple this with a charge controller. And yet when you get them from the store, you're thinking charge controller, it's got two clips right on it to hook straight to your battery. So they sort of indicate that you don't, that you hook this directly to the battery, but I think that this assumes you're the charge controller and that you're only gonna hook it up for a short time. If you leave it on long-term, I think there's a real risk of a very expensive mistake. So what do we do? So the charge controllers that they sell that I see in the store, are, they're inexpensive, as little as $20 but they're designed for 100 watt panels. And this is just a little 1.5 watt panel, so I'm not even sure if it'll protect your battery adequately uh, if you're gonna hook this panel up to the other charge controller, since it's probably really made for a larger bank of batteries, though I don't know. So a simple solution that I thought we could do together as an experiment is they also sell float controllers. And I thought we could make this little float controller, these are only about 10 bucks, and it has a built-in charge controller, which is supposed to turn this off when your battery, or at least limit and restrict the current, when your battery reaches a certain level of charge, regular lead acid battery. And as I said, we can use this as a dual purpose device. You still get something you can plug in if that's convenient for you, but if it's in the field, it's away from things and you wanna leave your solar panel long-term, this should maintain your battery without hurting it. So I'm not sure, it is a bit of a hack, but why don't we go into the shop, put this thing together, we'll connect it on up to the airplane and we'll do the test together. But the warning still stands. Don't hook that little solar panel up and leave it very long term because at least with me, I've lost two batteries. So let's, let's see if we can hack in and get all the advantage and none of the downside. Okay, so the plan here is crazy simple. We have the uh, end of the solar panel here, which would normally connect to the battery. And there's actually on this one a coupler here. So the slick way to do it would be to get an identical coupler and actually make the coupler feed right into our charge controller. Uh, but in this case, I'm actually just going to do a very fast, simple modification. And when this is used as a solar panel only, uh, then we can leave this on. And when it's used with the charge controller, we'll just remove uh, the two clamps there. So for now, I'll just remove those. And we're going to go ahead here and we're going to create a tap-in point. Now they make these really neat uh, no solder uh, coaxial connectors uh, that you can get just about anywhere. You could just do this with black tape and twisting a couple of wires. You don't have to do anything fancy. But just we'll go one step fancy. And I'm going to go ahead and here and here I'm going to go ahead and strip a little insulation off the wires. And we'll come right back and I'll show you how that turned out. Okay, so here we go. We've got the two wires I just stripped a little bit of insulation off of. Our coaxial connector has two uh, different terminal strips here uh, with a screw on top of each one. So we just insert the wires and then screw them in place and we'll have our first connector done. And there we go. So with the wires inserted, uh, this side's ready to go. Okay, and we've got our wires stripped, just a little bit of the insulation stripped off. We're going to insert those into the coaxial connector. I've temporarily plugged it in so we can check with our meter here and make sure that we've got our positive and negative leads properly identified. So you definitely want to pay attention to uh, polarity. And this is definitely indeed the positive lead. And this is definitely indeed the negative lead. So usually these little coaxial connectors have the positive and negative marked on them. And we'll just go ahead. We're going to double these wires over and insert them on this side. All right, there we have it. A really simple tap into our charge controller. You don't have to worry about the voltage from the solar panel going back to the wall wart to where you plug into the wall there is already a rectifier diode in there that'll block that current from going in the reverse direction so we just plug our solar panel in that we had tapped into before the current from the solar panel will run through the charge controller before it gets to the battery and hopefully keep our battery safe so if you want to just use the solar panel the way it was originally designed you're still not stuck with uh, using your charge controller you can simply disconnect the coaxial connector and plug straight in to the solar panel the way it was originally set up. You just have these little taps on either side. So let's go give it a try. Well, this is extremely hopeful. The green flashing light came on after I connected the solar panel and it's connected to the battery on the plane. So I will leave that out here. I'm gonna probably position that solar battery somewhere nice. 
but it changed from uh, amber to green flashing, just like it's supposed to when it's plugged into the wall. And I measured with the volt ohm meter and it was putting out the right amount of current in either state. So I think our charge controller might just work.